But modern Muslim apologetics get so pathetic that they try to downplay the seriousness of Islamic slavery. They explain how different conditions were there. Islamic slavery was different. Slaves were treated well, but they can just shut up right away. A slave is a slave, an inferior, a tool, an object, a property that you use for help. There is no justification, no excuse to this at all. There is no justification, no excuse to this at all. So, okay, slavery, you want to talk about slavery? There's a very interesting uh, quote from this uh, anthropologist named David Graeber. Um, he wrote a book called Debt, a uh, 5,000 year history. Uh, but he's he's an accomplished anthropologist. Anyway, he says that if we brought someone like Aristotle or we bought, brought someone from the past to modern society, that figure from the past would think that most people in society are in fact slaves. Okay? They're actually in fact slaves because our understanding of, of what is slavery, when we use that word, we think about chattel slavery, we think about 12 years a slave, things like this, these kinds of images of racial chattel slavery. And this is actually not historically universal. Uh, that's in America's history of transatlantic slavery. But most slavery in history did not look like that. In fact, every civilization, without exception, practiced slavery uh, and slave labor within history, including Europe and so forth with feudalism and, and um transatlantic slavery as i mentioned so when it came to uh pre-modern societies if one side defeats another side you have two countries in a war then what do you do with the losers what does the losing side do you either slaughter them or you ha you enslave them you can't just let them go and return because they're going to be angry they're going to reproduce get stronger and then come and pose an, uh, a threat as existential threat to them. okay so that's that's something that had to be the case in pre-modern societies and islam was their slavery was this the slavery of islam was not racially based it was based on prisoners of war in fact islam limited the avenues of entrance into slavery and islam was very good at integrating these uh conquered people into muslim society where this the slave class ended up becoming very powerful and uh very uh, knowledgeable, educated Muslims within overall Muslim society because the Islamic uh, state, Islamic law was not based on race, it was based on belief, as we discussed already. So, um, but the liberal mind has a problem with this idea of owning a person, right? Would you say that's the case? Because at the end of the day, okay, Islam treated slaves great and nice, that doesn't address the fundamental moral problem with slavery according to the liberal mind according to the liberal mind ownership it doesn't matter if the slave is living the life an opulent life but as long as he's owned that is the problem and the response to that is um historically slave labor was the dominant form of labor wage labor was actually uh relatively rare and there was a debate historically around the time of the Industrial Revolution in American history where wage labor was increasing. And there was a debate on whether slave labor and wage labor are really distinct. Is there really a fundamental difference between wage labor and slave labor? And the argument that people would use is that slavery, is there, is there a difference between owning someone versus renting someone? And this is a conceptual debate that they had and many uh, non-Muslim Western thinkers, liberal thinkers, argued that no, renting someone is worse because think about the difference between owning a car and renting a car. When you rent a car, you drive it, you know, in, in a very abusive kind of way, as opposed to owning it, where you—that's your investment. You care about it. Anyway, so that that that's something that's uncomfortable for people who uh, are raised in the West. But this is actually a reality, and this conceptually, this idea of renting a person versus owning a person was uh, there was no distinction between it. Uh, if you were a wage laborer historically, you might as well have been a slave. It's the same uh, thing. It was the same thing within all of these societies. Even uh, feudalism. Is feudalism really different from slavery? Even though you're given wages and you're given an, a, a portioned, uh, a, a certain uh, livelihood, is that really different from slavery? No, it's a basic concept. So the, the concepts, the, the legal 
concepts underlying slavery exist within the employer-employee contract of wage labor. And it's a cultural <clears throat> difference. In many cultures, there's not really a difference between saying that person A, like uh, Ridvan, owns uh, George. Okay, that's a slave relationship. Ridvan owns George. There's not really a difference between that and saying that George has a contra contractual obligation to Ridvan. Okay, because they both imply force. If you're contractually obligated to someone, that <laughs> implies force. Because if you don't pay up and you don't meet the contract, then you're liable to be punished by the law or punished by uh, Ridvan. And Ridvan can extract that debt from you uh, by force, and if you don't pay up, he can set, he can prosecute you. The sheriff can come and can execute you. So there's inherent violence in all contractual agreements, and this is something that um, leftist and communist thinkers were arguing uh, in the 20th century because they want to say that capitalism is essentially coercive. Capitalism is no different than slavery, and so you had a lot. You have this entire communist, leftist, Marxist tradition of arguing that capitalism is really fundamentally no different than slavery. So these are things that we can analyze and talk about at great length. But this is uh, these are some of the ideas that we should pursue in our hunger for truth. Because I completely agree that slavery is an essential part of human history. For example, you would you would you would think that uh, that I will come with one of those uh, with one of these these typical uh, imbecile objections and will think, oh, slavery is evil. How how dare people in, enslave people in history? How dare the Confederates do this and Muhammad do this and do that? No, I don't I don't think like that at all. I I think that slavery is completely historically logically justified.